Hello there. I bet Labour MP Jess Phillips wishes she'd kept her gob shut about this one because it's really let the cat out of the bag. Jess Phillips MP has boasted that she had preferential treatment in the NHS because of her pro-Gaza ceasefire vote in Parliament. So now we know. The NHS that the rest of us pay for through our taxes has been politicised by doctors. Phillips reports the Daily Mail was speaking at an event called An Evening with Jess Phillips in the Kiln Theatre, North London where she recounted the tale of when she was ill and said that she got to the front of the queue for two reasons. One being who she was and the second being because the doctor was Palestinian. Almost all the doctors in Birmingham seem to be, the male quotes her as saying. He was sort of like, I like you, you voted for a ceasefire. Because of that, I got through quicker. If Jess had a cat in her handbag, it has definitely taken flight now. I also wonder how a Labour MP has time for these sorts of self-aggrandising evenings when they have the full-time job of an MP, or so they say they have. Now I saw an ad for her appearance at the kiln. Not sure if it was the same event, but the tickets were going for 18 quid plus. Is that... A second job. A second job, something that the Labour Party decried in the run-up to the general election. So we're being told that we now have a two-tier health service as well as a two-tier police and justice system. And more about a possible event highlighting two-tier policing later in the video. And on two-tier healthcare, it does seem that most of us are being sent to the back of the health service queue at every opportunity. Doesn't it? And I was under the impression that Gaza needed all the doctors it could get hold of right now. Yeah, think about that one. Anyway, the implication is that Jess Phillips is an MP who voted for an immediate Gaza ceasefire, so the Palestinian doctor got her to the front of the NHS queue. Would that mean that a known Jewish or pro-Israel MP would be sent to the back of the queue? Sounds like a probable yes to me. And if it is true that Phillips blurted this out in this way at an event open to the public, it shows just how brazen this two-tier pro-certain demographic establishment that Phillips is a part of has become. And doesn't it also show what a twisted world view she has? And also absolutely no inkling in her brain when she said it of how divisive her statement would be. Can you imagine the uproar had an MP claimed that voting against the ceasefire got them some sort of preferential public service from a Jew? Just beggars belief how insulated from reality these people are and how far our country has fallen. If Phillips has not been sent to the Whitless Labour Party wilderness by the end of the day, then we know exactly where Labour stands on dividing the country along sectarian lines. Now, Phillips has also been the government's parliamentary undersecretary of state for safeguarding and violence against women and girls since July the 9th. Now, I could point out that the title, Parliamentary Undersecretary of State, Minister for Safeguarding and Violence Against Women and Girls would make her job both Minister for Safeguarding and Minister for Violence Against Women and Girls. Sounds very progressive, doesn't it? Shouldn't that be Minister Protecting Women and Girls from Violence? Just a thought. Now the police has come under a lot of criticism over its two-tier methods of controlling crowds just recently with a certain demographic appearing to get the softer ride when things get out of hand. But there have been a couple of notable events just recently that shows the police might be getting a bit tender on that particular two-tier issue. Or maybe Keir, two-tier Starmer, 
has sent the message down to the police chiefs that he is unhappy with the two-tier title because three pro-Palestine supporters have been arrested recently. The co-founder of Palestine Action, Richard Barnard, is reported by Jewish News as facing three charges for two speeches he has given. It has also previously reported on the arrest and detention for 24 hours of independent journalist and prolific user of X on pro-Palestine matters, Richard Medhurst. And lastly, as reported by the grandly titled World Socialist Website, British human rights activist and reporter Sarah Wilkinson was arrested by UK police on Thursday morning and subsequently released, allegedly for content she published online. About the situation in Gaza, obviously. And all the pro-Palestine activists are alarmed that they sent round 12 police officers to effect that arrest of Wilkinson. Well, they should have been watching and paying attention to what happens to Mr Tommy on a frequent basis, shouldn't they? And don't forget the arrests of Palestine action activists breaking into the premises of a defence firm they claimed was supplying weapons to Israel and then destroying all its equipment. So are these arrests an indication of a balance or rebalancing of the scales of justice? Is this just the police doing their job properly? Or is it a met reaction to try and show that they are not two-tier, that Kia is not two-tier? Well, given that the reports about the arrest of Sarah Wilkinson reference stuff she allegedly posted straight after the October the 7th atrocity, it does sort of indicate that the police are working very slowly on that balancing act thing, doesn't it? Especially given all the antics at the pro-Palestine marches and demonstrations that we've seen. And the question will be, what do marchers at future pro-Palestine rallies think about all these arrests of their supporters? Now I've come across a few of the ex-posts that Medhurst has published about a certain Mr Robinson. All, in my opinion, needling Robinson for his current legal difficulties. So I assume that Medhurst would not be at all bothered for those who disagree with him to return the compliment. Anyway, back to the establishment and its police force. What are we to make of this sudden interest in focusing on the stunts of the pro-Palestine mob? Personally, I'm very sceptical about their balance here. Also remember that it was only recently that the justice system came down hard on the eco-loons, after all the years they've been making a misery of our lives. As far as I'm concerned, this is nothing to do with balance or justice. Now, I'm all for punishing real intent to stir up violence and actual attempts or actions to damage property and injure people. But as far as I can see, this latest chapter in the history of our justice system is a series of very heavy-handed responses to impose authority and making harsh examples of those who put their heads above the parapet in order to terrify the general populace into meek obedience. All along the lines of, if that person can get months inside for a Facebook post, what would I get for just marching in London alongside like-minded people? These overbearing reactions by the state are already having that effect. So Keir Starmer will be so pleased with himself. But these actions that have caused the male prison estate in England and Wales to just about implode under the pressure also, in my eyes, demonstrate a sort of alarm at the top of how borderline this all is. Especially when you hear that the Prime Minister himself was involved in counting how many spare prison and police cells there were every day at Cobra meetings during those so-called far-right riots. I do not get the impression that they felt at all comfortable. Now there are murmurings of another rally in October, or thereabouts, to highlight the two-tier policing issue, to which, as I understand it, no hotheads will be invited. 
If it does go ahead, all peaceful patriots will be invited to attend to make it an even bigger success than June the 1st and July the 27th events. Do not be put off by the machinations of the establishment. Peaceful protest is your right and they cannot remove it from you unless we really do live in a totalitarian state.